Firefighters off to another call out and not a whiff of diesel fumes left at the station. They risk their lives in the field, but things can be just as dangerous back at base. Diesel fumes from fire trucks can kill. There's nothing more important than the safety of our people and, uh, and one of the ways we've, we've managed to keep people safe is to, wherever possible, remove diesel particular from the atmosphere and that's back at stations with exhaust extraction systems or other ventilation solutions. Keith Sanderson is General Manager of Nediman, a worldwide supplier of exhaust extraction systems. It's all about firefighter safety. Diesel fume is a, it's a known contaminant. Where they work, live, breathe. So if we can get rid of it, let's do that. In New Zealand, exhaust extraction systems were introduced more than two decades ago. And the aim is to have an exhaust fume management solution for every station. The World Health Organisation uh, has you know, recognised diesel particulate as a carcinogen. Um, and we, in our normal everyday work, come into contact with uh, carcinogens. Uh, some we can do something about, and diesel's one of them. The Nederman hose automatically detaches when a fire truck leaves the station, ensuring there is no delay to the firefighters' call out and is ready to reattach when they get back. It'll be hanging down waiting. They'll drive in at the entrance bay. They'll simply reattach it to the exhaust, hit the valve, the bladder blows up, it's done. There's also another version for larger stations. The system we have here is the pneumatic rail system, um, which is designed, as you can see, for trucks in series one behind the other. Um, in any number of trucks, really. Um, so that would be for the bigger fire stations? Bigger fire stations, that's right, the bigger fire stations, such as the one you see here. It's simple and innovative. The fumes are extracted direct from the fire truck, removed from the station and dispersed out. There's also a magnet-type system where the hose attaches via an electromagnet to the outside of the truck. They're like a big vacuum cleaner and the different systems have been thoroughly tested and continually developed for over 30 years and have come through with flying colours. The damage caused by a huge fire on Christchurch's Port Hills a year and a half ago is still obvious. That blaze stretched fire crews and their facilities to full capacity. At the end of their shifts, fire crews returned to clean stations and fresh air. A big improvement on the old days. Plywood boxes were built uh, and inside those plywood boxes would be a whole, a whole lot of bats. We all know what bats are and um, that would be placed up against the exhaust of fire appliances. So when they started uh, going to a call or leaving the station, hopefully that, and that initial sort of burst of um, exhaust fumes would go into the box. One of the obvious improvements is a lack of soot on the walls and the ceilings of the appliance base and on the, uh, the firefighters' clothing that was hanging in the appliance base in the older stations. But nowadays employers have to ensure safe working conditions. Those that don't risk being taken to court. And for those regions with presumptive legislation, the burden of proof is no longer with the firefighter, but with the employer to show their workplace didn't cause the health problems. Now presumptive legislation states that certain cancers over a certain period of time, then there's no burden of proof, it's a, a work cover claim as such. Meaning that while these firefighters are busy protecting lives, it's important that the best measures are in place to protect them.